by Srila Prabhupada. Tapaha is explained in the Smriti Shastra as follows. Manasas chendriyanam cha aikagriyam paramam tapaha. Complete control of the mind and senses and their complete concentration on one kind of activity is called tapaha. Our Krishna consciousness movement is teaching people how to concentrate the mind on devotional service. This is first class tapaha. Brahmacharya, the life of celibacy, has eight aspects. One should not think of women, speak about sex life, dally with women, look lustfully at women, talk intimately with women, or decide to engage in sexual intercourse, nor should one endeavor for sex life or engage in sex life. One should not even think of women or look at them to say nothing of talking with them. This is called first class brahmacharya. If a brahmachari or sannyasi talks with a woman in a secluded place, naturally there will be a possibility of sex life without anyone's knowledge. Therefore, a complete brahmachari practices just the opposite. If one is a perfect brahmachari, he can very easily control the mind and senses, give charity, speak truthfully and so forth. To begin, however, one must control the tongue and the process of eating. In the Bhakti Marga, the path of devotional service, one must strictly follow the regulated principles by first controlling the tongue. Sevaun mukhehi jigvadav swayam meva spuratyadaha The tongue, jigva, can be controlled if one chants the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, does not speak of any subjects other than those concerning Krishna, and does not taste anything not offered to Krishna. If one can control the tongue in this way, Brahmacharya and other purifying processes will automatically follow. It will be explained in the next verse that the path of devotional service is completely perfect and is therefore superior to the path of fruitive activities and the path of knowledge. Quoting from the Vedas, Srila Viraragava Acharya explains that austerity involves observing fast as fully as possible. Tapasa Anashakena Srila Rupa Goswami has also advised that Atyahara, too much eating, is an impediment to advancement in spiritual life. Also in Bhagavad Gita 6.17, Krishna says, Yukta hara viharasya, yukta cheshtasya karmasu, yukta svapnava bodhasya, yogo bhavati dukkhaha. He who is temperate in the habits, in his habits of sleeping, sorry, he who is temperate in his habits of eating, sleeping, working and recreation, can mitigate all material pains by practicing the yoga system. In text 14, the word dhira, meaning those who are undisturbed under all circumstances, is very significant. Krishna tells Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita 2.14, Matras parshastu kaunteya shitoshna sukadukkhadaha agama apayinaha anityaha tamstitik chasva bharata. O son of Kunti, the non-permanent appearance of happiness and distress and their disappearance in due course are like the appearance and disappearance of winter and summer seasons. They arise from sense perception, O sky of Bharata, and one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed. In material life, there are so many disturbances, Adhyatmika, Adhidaivika, and Adhibhautika. One who has learned to tolerate these disturbances under all circumstances is called Dhira. Thus ends the Bhakti Vilanta purport. So here is a conversation between Shukadeva Goswami and Parikshit Maharaj. And Parikshit Maharaj has heard about Prayas Chitta, the method of atonement for the sake of avoiding going to hell due to having committed very abominable, sinful activities. So Parikshit Maharaj is asking, as a Vaishnava who is compassionate upon the suffering souls, how can this 
suffering in hell be avoided? So Shukadeva Goswami promptly replies, yes, by Prashita. Before death comes, one should atone, at least atone for this grievous sinful activities. So Parichit Maharaj says, hey, this Prashita will not work for those whose senses are uncontrolled. The very reason why a person committed sinful activities in the first place is because his senses are uncontrolled. So, a person with uncontrolled senses cannot do prashchitta. Somehow, even if he does prashchitta, he will again commit sinful activities because his senses are uncontrolled. So, this prashchitta is not really effective to uh, avoid the reactions of very grievous sinful activities committed by a person. So, therefore, Shukare Goswami suggests that uh, uh, it is true that one type of uh, activity, pious activity, called prayaschitta, cannot really counteract the sinful reaction of sinful activity completely. So, Shukare Goswami says, there is another method of counteracting sinful reactions and that is the method of jnana. First was the method of fruitive activity or pious activities. Second is the method of jnana, cultivation of knowledge, especially spiritual knowledge. So, on the path of cultivation of knowledge, one becomes uh, sufficiently knowledgeable to be able to avoid sinful activities. And by following the regulated principles of knowledge, one can gradually progress towards liberation from material contamination. One can become free from sinful reactions. So, what are the regulated principles of knowledge? That is described in this 13th and 13th verse actually. Tapasa brahmacharyena shamena cha damena cha tyagena satya shaucabhyam yamena niyamena va. Srila Prabhupada has given exact meanings of each of these uh, principles of uh, regulative principles of knowledge. First, tapaha is explained as uh, complete control of the mind and senses and their complete concentration on one kind of activity is called tapaha. To be able to focus the mind on one kind of activity is possible only if one has complete control over the mind and senses. The mind and senses are interconnected. The mind is the center of all these senses. And the senses in contact with sense objects are dragging the mind dragging the mind towards uh, sense enjoyment and to restrain the senses requires mind and sense control even if the senses are controlled but the mind is uncontrolled, then 
it is not possible to ultimately restrain the senses. Here it is said, our Krishna consciousness movement is teaching people how to concentrate the mind on devotional service. By concentration of the mind, on complete concentration on one kind of activity, one can actually control the mind and senses. It's possible. But what kind of activity can the mind concentrate completely? So that has been analyzed in the scriptures and it is said, the mind requires a resting place Mind requires a resting place. So the actual resting place of the mind is the lotus feet of Krishna. No other resting place for the mind can actually enable the mind to fully concentrate on one thing. It's not possible. Therefore, in the ninth canto of the Bhagavatam, while describing the great devotee Ambarish Maharaj, how did he become such a great devotee? Even though he was engaged in responsible uh, state administration, he was the emperor of the whole world. So how could he be a first class devotee? It is said, Savai Mana Krishna Padara Vindayo. Ambarish Maharaj fixed his mind on the lotus feet of Krishna. This fixing the mind on the lotus feet of Krishna is also the aim of the Ashtanga yogis. Of course, they don't directly try to fix the mind on the lotus feet of Krishna. But they try to concentrate the mind on the form of Paramatma in the heart, who is not different from Krishna. But the yogis fail if they don't take to devotional service. The only way to do that is by devotional service. If they don't take to devotional service, then they are unable to fix the mind on Paramatma or any object of concentration or any activity or even on the lotus feet of Krishna. Without devotional service, it's not possible. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has taught us the easiest method even in devotional service to fix the mind on the lotus feet of Krishna. Even in devotional service there are many different methods. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmanivedanam. There are so many different processes. But among all the processes which is the most recommended to hear and chant especially the holy name of Krishna. So therefore, Srila Prabhupada here translates Niyamena va, Yamena Niyamena va Yama and Niyama are generally explained or described in the Shastra as the first two steps of Ashtanga Yoga. But for somebody practicing devotional service, this Niyama refers to regularly chanting the holy name of the Lord. Especially, devotional service is taught by Lord Chaitanya. Yam, niyamena means by regularly chanting the holy name. And Yamena means 
by avoiding cursing and violence. It actually means avoiding offenses. So, <clears throat> the process of mind and sense control in the method taught by Lord Chaitanya is simply to uh, practice uh, regularly chanting and hearing, hearing and chanting the Hare Krishna mantra while avoiding all kinds of offenses, especially offenses against the holy name and in general all types of offenses against uh, the Vaishnavas, against the deities, against people in general, against any living entity. So this is uh, the recommendation. Yamena niyamena va. Then Brahmacharya, it actually means celibacy. It actually means completely giving up a sense gratification of which sex pleasure is the chief. Sex pleasure is the chief of all types of sense enjoyment. So to completely give up sense gratification, especially give up sex enjoyment, the recommendation in the Shastra is very, very uh, stringent. Srila uh, Prabhupada quotes the Smriti Shastra. Uh, there are eight aspects of Brahmacharya. One should not think of women, one should not speak about sex life, one should not dally with women, one should not look lustfully at women, etc, etc. So many. All round control, all the five senses and the mind and the words, the tongue. So such control may seem to be impossible especially in this age. But it is possible through Krishna Consciousness. What happens when somebody practices Krishna Consciousness? The attention or the mind is diverted away from sense objects. The mind and senses are diverted away from sense objects towards Krishna. Krishna is supremely attractive. Krishna is all attractive. Every aspect of Krishna is powerfully attractive. So the mind and senses, when focused on Krishna, then there is a power of attraction uh, of Krishna that uh, by such attraction, one very easily is able to forget or ignore or neglect or uh, consider very insignificant any prospect of sense enjoyment. This actually happens to devotees who begin practicing Krishna consciousness a little seriously and sincerely in the association of other uh, uh, advanced devotees. When we come to Krishna consciousness, we lose interest in so many varieties of sense enjoyment that we were otherwise engaged. That losing the interest is not exactly forced. Is not exactly forced. Is not by necessarily cultivation of knowledge. It's not by regulative principles of knowledge. It is because of the attraction due to Krishna consciousness. It is that attraction. Now such attraction 
to be sustained to be increased to become completely uh, fixed up in such attraction for krishna there is a process sadhana bhakti because it's the nature of the mind and the senses that one moment we may be attracted by krishna and there is no guarantee the next moment we may not be attracted by some other sense object other than krishna there is no such guarantee just like we come to have darshan so the deities are very beautifully decorated so we are naturally attracted to see the deity we standing there how long will we concentrate our attention on the deity maybe for a little time after that tendency is to look around and if there is sense object you forget krishna even standing in front of krishna immediately your attention is dragged or drawn towards the sense object that is because our heart is full of desires for sense enjoyment from previous contact previous contact of the senses of sense objects before coming to krishna consciousness so there is a load we are carrying uh, called material contamination and this load foolishly we have been increasing life after life after life after life for millions of lifetimes so if at all you have a program that i want to become fully purified so that i will not get distracted by any sense object even while trying to focus my attention on krishna even though krishna is supremely attractive still i don't want to get distracted then i require a process of purification which is very 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 powerful so powerful that within a reasonable amount of time i should be able to completely purify my heart when no material desires remain there is no distraction and material desires are not there for material desires for material enjoyment are not there in the heart there is no distraction at all so always remember the attraction per se is not in the object but it is inside the heart the consciousness so we require to purify our consciousness therefore krishna while describing the yoga system in the sixth chapter he says yogam atma vishuddhaye yoga practice ultimately should aim at to achieve perfection of yoga practice you should aim at atma vishuddhi now here atma doesn't exactly refer to the soul the soul is always pure asangoyam purushaha but the consciousness in contact with sense objects with a desire for sense enjoyment the consciousness becomes polluted so this pollution actually is a superficial thing it's a superficial thing it is actually a a concoction of the subtle body when a particular type of gross body is given 
to facilitate the concoction to be carried out. It is just like a dog mentality of enjoyment results in the particular Atma desiring dog type of enjoyment getting a dog's physical body, gross body. But the gross body has got the basis in the subtle body. Why gross body? Because the subtle body, the mentality of enjoying like a dog. So the whole gross body mechanism is driven by the subtle body. This we have to carefully understand. Now the subtle body is due to so many misconceptions about pleasure itself. So many misconceptions. The sum total of all the misconceptions about enjoyment itself can be called false ego, ahankara. The real ego is a sense of identity about who am I. So that original pure identity or correct understanding of our identity is I am servant of Krishna, I am part and parcel of Krishna, I belong to Krishna, my pleasure is Krishna consciousness. This is the original ego, original identity, original uh, understanding. But Krishna bhuliya ji bhoga vanchakare. When we forget Krishna and desire bhoga, material enjoyment, then immediately we are captured by Maya. Nikatastha Maya tare japati adhare. Immediately we are captured by Maya. We are captivated by Maya. And captivated by Maya means immediately there is misconception. What is the misconception? The first misconception is that uh, I am the enjoyer and such enjoyment entails a conception that I am the controller. So I am the enjoyer and I am the controller for the sake of bhoga entails that we have to get a subtle body and a gross body. So Krishna Bhulia Ji Bhogavan Chakare results in subtle body and subtle body results in gross body. So the root of the subtle body is I am the enjoyer and I am the controller. Very nicely Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada has explained this in the introduction to the Bhagavad Gita. And to purify this subtle body, to correct this wrong mentality, this misconception about myself, is very easy if you take up chanting Hare Krishna while fixing the attention on the sound vibration of the holy name of Krishna. Because Krishna is incarnated as the sound of the holy name. So Krishna very kindly appears on the tongue of the chanter as the vibration. Hare Krishna mantra, sound vibration. The sound vibration of the holy name. And if that holy name vibrated by the tongue, the sound of the holy name enters the ears and there is a clear channel from the ear up to the heart. A clear channel is required for that sound to go and purify the contaminated consciousness. There are barriers. First of all, 
this senses themselves are the barriers physical barrier are the external senses then there is the barrier of the subtle body which consists of three divisions the mind the intelligence and the false ego so four sets of barriers we have to overcome for the sound to enter the ears and actually reach the the soul the consciousness it is a consciousness which is contaminated which has to be purified that is working at the root of the cause of our material existence of the cause of this distraction cause of i am the uh, misconception that i am the enjoyer i am the controller all these misconceptions the total false ego can be completely destroyed if the holy name can enter your ears and without being distracted because of other senses sense objects the sound vibration is able to penetrate first the gross body the five senses and then able to penetrate the mind then the intelligence and finally the false ego so this whole process is summarized by chaitanya mahaprabhu that simply you chant and hear attentively in order to facilitate the attention to be completely uh, given for the chanting and hearing the uh, scriptures very scientifically describe 10 kinds of offenses which we have to avoid so don't disconnect this proper chanting from the 10 offenses they are very much connected if somebody is not avoiding the 10 offenses such a person cannot attentively properly chant the holy name of the supreme lord so you have to consider what are the 10 offenses therefore in the process of sadhana bhakti the first 20 principles described by rupa goswami shri rupa goswami is there are 10 positive injunctions and 10 negative injunctions yama and niyama even in ashtanga yoga is don'ts don't do this and do's what you should positively do negative injunctions and positive injunctions so the essence of all the <clears throat> positive injunctions is constantly chant the holy name of the supreme lord and the essence of all the negative injunctions is avoid the 10 offenses against the chanting of the holy name but this cannot be the only practice because it is not possible for a beginner or a neophyte devotee to constantly engage always in chanting hari krishna it's not possible practically it's not possible So Sri Rupa Goswami recommends that you engage all your senses the five senses of perception and the five senses of action in devotional activities varieties of devotional engagement Rupa Goswami describes as 64 different principles of sadhana bhakti so in order to be able to properly chant and hear inoffensively and come to the 
stage of constantly chanting the holy name of the supreme lord very nicely you should follow all the 64 injunctions principles of sadhana bhakti now they are not very difficult the number 64 may be scary but it is not like you know you have to take up one and then do that and then become properly fixed up in that and then do the second one you know it's not like that they are so arranged that they cover all range of physical mental verbal activities of a common person throughout the day of course common person it is meant a civilized person huh? one living in a civilized society as a human being so the expert acharya directs the disciple or the devotee or the interested candidate in how to practically uh, follow the 64 principles so shrila prabhupad has given us a lifestyle recommended lifestyle of somebody serious about practicing krishna consciousness following all the 64 principles so this lifestyle if we just adapt ourselves then all the 64 principles are covered this is the expertise of the acharya so shrila prabhupad has uh um made this institution where some people at least some devotees will be dedicated for following very strictly and the others who are not able to stay within an institution and dedicatedly follow can take association and try to follow as far as possible at home all these 64 principles now these 64 principles are so nice that even if one is not able to uh follow all the 64 principles if you understand that ultimately you have to come to the stage of chanting and hearing the holy name of krishna at least 16 rounds attentively then you are successful completely successful in uh, in uh, conquering this uh, false ego purifying your consciousness and uh, reaching the highest perfection hmm? it is possible so therefore aiming always to uh, chant hari krishna at least 16 rounds every day and aiming to chant these rounds without committing offenses avoiding the offenses so this becomes the goal of a serious devotee in order to completely purify the consciousness and come to the original natural pure state of krishna consciousness i'll stop here grantaraj shrimad bhagavatam ki jai shri prabhupad ki jai hari krishna subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss any updates